from a place we're not allowed to reveal. I got it. I got it. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm on drugs. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. We'll be joined later this hour by Gustavo Ariano. His, uh, his column, Ask a Mexican, of course, is seen in a variety of of uh, alternative newspapers around the country. It began in the OC Weekly right here in SoCal. Added a scene in the LA Weekly, the Dallas Observer, the Village Voice, lots of newspapers across the country. Uh, he, of course, uh, has come on to answer your questions about Mexicans. He, he even had a book called Ask a Mexican based on his column. He's got a new book called Orange County, A Personal History. And Gustavo will be here in a few minutes and we will talk with him. In the meantime, we are talking to people who thought they knew more than the professor. If that's you, if you got burned, if you found out the hard way, you've heard the professor, you've heard what he's had to say, and yet you went ahead and did your own thing, call me now at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Trevor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing, Father? Doing great, sir. That's good to hear. Um... I've uh, seemed to run myself into a little situation here as of late. I met myself uh, a really good woman at uh, at my local church, and um, you met a really good religious. woman at a local church. Are you religious? Yes. yes, Father. All right, and because you met a good woman at the church, uh, of course, there's no sex. The two of you uh, hold hands. You go to the malt shop. Uh, the two of you are, uh, of course, uh, waiting. Until you well, get married. I mean, I'm not exactly, I don't adhere to every exact rule uh, of the church. I mean, what a coincidence. So it's a Chinese menu, and it's one from column A and one from column B. Well, I mean, it's just it's we, a la we, carte Christianity. It's awesome. Sarah Palin Christianity. Here it is. Sarah Palin is a good Christian woman. Sure she is. One from column A and one from column B. Anyways, Tom. She already has two children, and I I was okay with this at first, and it just seems like the more we get into our relationship, the less I seem to matter and the more I have to be about her children. And as it turns out, she's pregnant, too, with one of mine. Well, didn't you know that would happen? I didn't. Tom, we were careful. We used condoms. I don't know what happened. Control. What did I tell you about women who don't use birth control? What did I, I tell you? What did I tell you about? It's not it, it's not good, but we were using... No, 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 no. What did I tell you about... I told you something very specific. What did I tell you about women who don't use birth control? I guess I must have missed class that day. What do they want? They want a baby. They want to have a baby. But she already had two. I didn't, it didn't I was, matter. She wanted to have a baby. Women who don't use birth control don't use birth control because they want to have a baby. You were assuming she didn't want to have another one. She already had two. Didn't that tell you something? Well, it's just I was listening to your show yesterday about women who weren't willing to have the option of an abortion, and she's along the same lines. That I don't think it's going to happen, and I think this is going to go full term. Well, uh, uh, Trevor, she's Christian. She's I a know. Christian who likes to fornicate. <laughs> exactly, exactly. One from oh, column yeah. A and one from column B. I thought that meant she would be a little more liberal in her views. 
No, I no, no, I you met her in church. Her. You met her in church, and she's a whore. It's You meet a woman in church, and you don't think that she would be like this. I mean, Why I would you think she would have sex? Wait a minute. Don't be a moron. Why do you think she's having sex with you? That's probably why she's going to church, too, to meet suckers like me. That's right. I told you, if they already have kids and they're not using birth control, you already know what they have in mind. Oh, gee, Father, please. I need to be so... What can you do? Her. You did it already. You did it. You knew more than me. I would never say that I knew. Why are you fishing around in church to meet women? If you just want to get laid, church... Ah, uh, that's enough. All right, we're not going to have any graphic talk like that on the air. You're out! Oh, my God. What kind of Christianity is that? Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, well, Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, hello, how are you? I'm doing okay. I have a question for you. I listened to your show when I first came to America. I'm from, uh, from London, England. Uh, I, this is a couple of years ago. I was married at the time. I listened to you. Got a, I wasn't happy in the marriage, so I got a divorce. I'm making uh, good money now. I have a nice career. And I cannot find a girl in Los Angeles. You to, can't find a girl. Well, I can find a girl. I can find a girl to go out with in Los Angeles, but I meet them. They like me. They like uh, they like who I am. But when I call them, they don't call me back. Well, then they don't like you as much as they say they do. So what have I? But well, a friend of mine said to me that I'm being too nice to them. Well, that it, your friend knows you better than I do, and we tell people all the time on this program: nice guys don't get laid. But then, how how do you be, how are you supposed to be nasty to them? Then uh, you're supposed to be unpredictable, rude, use backhanded compliments. You know what a backhanded compliment is? Absolutely. All right. When you tell a chick that uh, she shouldn't pay any attention to what people say about her, that you like them. With a little meat on their bones. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that makes a woman insecure and chops away at her self-esteem. Give me, give me, give me two other uh, comments that I can say. Uh, other this is comments. Very difficult for me because I'm a nice person, you know. I don't usually date women who look like you. <laughs> I'm so glad I called you. You gotta have some balls. It, by the it, way, by the way, Gary and I... Them. I like meeting them, but then I call them up and they don't call me back. It's like they, yeah, don't, but, answer but, the but the, or they don't answer the texts or... Yeah, but the, the point is you got to be a jerk. And part of being a jerk is you... You know what? How, how long do you wait to call them? I uh, wait three days. Don't... you got to wait a week minimum. A week. You want them to believe you've got other fish to fry. You're talking about five days or seven days? Seven, the seven day week. What, what are you using the metric system? Come on. <laughs> seven days, minimum. You don't call the right back. And then I should ask them to go out on a date on that, uh, like after that, or. or... Well, 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 I wouldn't call it a date the way you would call it a date. Uh, there's no movies, there's no dinner, there's no sporting events, there's no concerts. What, just straight to the bar? Straight to the bar. Okay, Start I'll give you an bite. example of two other girls I went out with. I went out with two other girls. I went drinking with them. I like drinking. They seemed like they could handle their alcohol. As soon as I got them back to my place, they started throwing up everywhere. And that was the last two dates I went out. Well, yeah, then you see, again, the phrase, they seem to be able to handle the alcohol. You, what you want to do is you want to give them alcohol, but you don't want to overdo it. I mean, with women, you know, put it this way. Getting drunk is a function of how much you weigh. If you weigh 180 pounds, it takes more to get you drunk than if you weigh 100 pounds. Uh -huh. And so uh, with the average woman, at least the average woman you would actually want to have sex with, 
And and Gary and I were in London a year ago, and we've seen the uh, the the Pillsbury Dough Girls on the subway over in London. We know uh, what's over there. There are some nice ones, you know, you, but they only come out in the summertime. And 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 by the way, they're not on the underground. I'll tell you right now, <laughs> they're riding in a limo somewhere, usually with a guy who's paying for. It. <laughs> tell you right now, most of the girls just these big pasty white doughy things. But uh, nonetheless, uh, when you get a chick here, you want to get two shots into her and then be done with it. Get her back to her place. Her place. Not your place. Why not your place? Be because these are psycho bitches, especially the ones who put out. You want them stalking you? No. Nah. My <laughs> God, if you can help it, you don't want them to know your last name. You don't even want them to know your real first name. So give them a, give them a false uh, last name as well. Yes, just, just you're anything. You're okay. John Smith. You're uh, Alex Jones. It doesn't matter. You're anybody. Huh. Well, by the way, much, throw huh? out, throw out. And by the way, what do you tell them you do for a living? Um, well, I never tell them what I uh, what I do, just in case they could find me. Uh, well, what you, I knew, you wouldn't be telling them anyway. What do you actually do? Um, I'm in the transit business. You're in the transit business. <laughs> What, I'm, what I do. No, no, you're, you're anonymous. We don't know who you are. I mean, are you a bus driver? What are you? No, 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 no. I, uh, I run a, a company that... that uh, a like trucking transit. company? Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you run it or you own it? No, I own it. You own it? Own it and run it, yes. Is it large and lucrative? Uh, yes, it is. Uh-huh. Well, here's what we're going to do. Since you're from England, you're not in, a, you're not in the trucking business anymore. <laughs> No, you're you're an actor. I'm an actor, but actors oh. make no money. That's why I didn't want to become an actor. She doesn't. They, chicks don't know that in this country, actors get paid a lot more than England. Don't you know that? Why do you think they all come here? Why do you think Hugh Grant makes movies here? Because in England, they don't make any money. But the, but the problem is, that I live in Los Angeles. Everybody's an actor. No, no, no. You're an actor who's done films in you, Europe. In Europe. Countless films. You were. Does doesn't she remember? You were in four weddings and a funeral. You were in the wedding date. Remember that movie? She. You were in that one. <laughs> Any movie with Brits in it. You look it up. Tell her you were in that film. Shit. You know how long it's going to take her to check. By the time she finds out if you were or weren't in the movie, you will have already gotten what you wanted and moved on, like like a, uh, an armed robber. Okay. These chicks don't know. I tell American guys, you know, tell them you're on the third line of the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> How will they ever know if it's true? Yeah. You're the white guy who plays for the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, who knows? <laughs> I'm probably too small for that. That's my point. They, some of these teams feel like they have to have a white guy. Frankly, the white guy is smaller and less talented. But the point is, chicks fall for this stuff. So I just, yeah, just got to keep plodding along and just... Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Are you kidding me? You, <laughs> you were in that TV show Extras, remember? <laughs> you were in the David Bowie episode. Didn't they see that? Okay. You throw out a bunch of stuff like this that they can never check. And then it what? Then it sparks their interest more. Of course it does. Okay. I mean, look, you can't get away with saying you're Hugh Grant because I haven't seen you, but you may be the best looking guy in the world. You, you're not Hugh Grant and you would know one look you would know. But you could be the guy who was uh, with Ricky Gervais on extras. You could be one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Who would remember? In this country, what, did 5 million people see extras? That means there's 295 million who never saw it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You know, uh, when you're in England, it's a much smaller world. 
Yeah, Gary and I spent the better part of half a month in London, and uh, we spent a lot of time uh, wandering around town and talking to people and uh, reading the papers and watching the news and watching the, the chat shows on TV and what have you. And i got to tell you something. It's the same five guests on every talk show every day because it's a small country. Yeah, you're right about that. So, so you know every movie that's opening, you know every actor, you know everybody they're gossiping about because it's a real small pool to deal with. In this country, we've got 350 channels. We got TV coming out the ass. We got TV shows, movie channels, movies, movies that go straight to DVD. Nobody sees all that stuff. Do you know what our producer, our assistant producer, Dean, used to do? Dean used to find a way, find websites online where they talked about movies that are in production, coming out in the fall, coming out in the spring. And he would look through the list of cast members, and he would pick a name, and he would say, I'm in Pearl Harbor. It's opening uh, next fall. So then you're not an unemployed actor. You are in, you are attached to a project. Got you just in case they check. Well, even if they check, it's good. Do chicks know how to Google? Come on. By the time they figure out if you're telling the truth or not, you've already nailed them. <laughs> do you know that? Do you ever see the TV show Entourage on HBO? Yeah, I have seen it. Yeah, the executive producer and the creator of the show is a guy named Mark Ellen. And there's a guy, have you ever seen Mark Allen? No, never. Oh, Doug Allen, I'm sorry, four letters, Mark, Doug, same thing. Uh, Doug Allen. Uh, Doug Allen, you've never seen Doug Allen, ever. Well, neither have most of the girls in town. And this guy was going around to restaurants saying, well, I'm Doug Allen. He was getting meals, and he was going on telling girls he was Doug Allen, he was getting laid. Maybe I can get you a spot on Entourage. <laughs> it was so rampant. That HBO actually put out a press release telling people that, that this is not Doug Allen. But how many guys did that guy nail? How many chicks did that guy nail before before they finally put out the press release? And even when they put out the press release, how many chicks were reading the paper of all things? I'd rather be a producer than an actor. All right, you're a producer. You know, pick a film you like. And you produce that one. Okay. I will follow uh, what you're telling me, uh, Tom. It works. I believe you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is simple. It's simple. 1-800-5800-866 is our telephone number. I'm talking to people who thought they knew more than I did. But they didn't. Ron on the Tom Likas show, hello. Bob and Tom. Yes. I, I do confession. I um, live here in being a good old brother up here, a true American, doing the American thing, making decent money. I always was raised in decent senior dealings and everything else. Uh, and used to work down in California where I grew up at. As a matter of fact, I grew up around Fontana. And uh, I love white women. I love Hispanics. I love Asians. I love all women. And it seemed like in the last three or four years, my game, I'm 41 years old, and my game has fallen off. Now, I do team roping. I go to the rodeos. I guarantee get laid. But that doesn't suffice enough. Wow. I need some help, Father. I've been taking notes. Well, uh, nice guys don't get laid. It's that simple. Be a jerk. Be unpredictable. Say you'll call, then don't. Say the two of you should go out to dinner sometime, then forget about it. Don't be physically abusive to anybody ever. You just want to be emotionally unavailable, completely unreliable. Chicks dig that. <laughs> Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you because the more I listen to you, the more I realize that he's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's 
Scott Micah Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We'll be joined by Gustavo Ariano coming up. For a little bout of Ask a Mexican. We'll be here to talk about his new book. And more coming up on the Tom Likas Show. Don't go away. Just stay right there. Stay glued to the radio, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I'm talking to people who thought they knew more than I did. If that's you, one 800 800 8 Six six. Here comes John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. Oh, Tom, do I have a story for you? Check it okay. out. I thought I knew more than you. Um, I started dating a, a single mother. How'd and, that work uh, out for you? Oh, it's it's still not working out well. Um, the father of the, of the kid um, attacked me. I guess you know. He was mad that I was dating his ex or something. He attacked me. I, I I defended myself. He ended up getting hurt really bad. I ended up in jail doing six months in jail. Um, I just finished my uh, 52-week course of anger management, which cost me $1,040. I'm still paying my court fines, my arresting fee, which it was $150, my booking fee. Um the court fines is going to be like twenty five hundred dollars, Tom. I have so of, of course, of course, you decided you did not need this, and you broke up with her, right? Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. I said no way, no more single mothers. You know, that's it. You know, I, you know, I haven't even gone out that much. I've been just concentrating on on paying all these fines. And now, then, who, didn't I warn you about dating single mothers? Yes, and I still thought I knew more than you, Tom. Nobody knows more than you, Tom. Nobody. What made you think this was different? I, uh, I don't know. I was thinking with my other uh, cabeza, my other head. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know, Tom. I, I said, I, I don't know. I just said, ah, maybe uh, that won't happen. No, nothing would happen, but... Yeah, oh, well, I, I, I told you, I told you that these are the kinds of things that happen, but uh, you were smarter than me. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's bad, Tom. I'm on three years probation. I can't even leave the state, Tom. I want to go to Las Vegas, watch the fights. I can't do that. I'll, I'll, go to, uh, I'll go to prison for four years if I violate my probation. Was it a felony? Yeah. So you can't vote either? Yeah, I can vote. I can vote. I then, then it's not a felony. Yeah, it's a felony. Uh, uh, um, well, aunt, you better check it. again because my understanding about felons is that they can't vote. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought that too. They even have a uh, when I was locked up. They even had like a little uh, um, like a paper on the wall that you know right for voting and all that stuff. I when I got out, I I, I signed up, you know, registered to vote, and I said, hey, you know what? I told them I'm on I'm on probation. Or they they said, uh, yeah, it's no problem. No Somebody who knows the law will call in and tell us the truth, but I don't think uh, I don't think that's the law. I think the law is if you're if you're a felon, you cannot vote. Well, I got to check that out again, and that's gonna suck. look. I can't even vote because I, I broke your rule. If that's yeah. true, Tom. <laughs> that's, if, it, if it's true, uh, it's even worse. You know, just just for not listening to you, I cannot even vote. You know, if that's true. So, and felons have other uh, restrictions. I don't even know all of them, but. I'm sure you've got an attorney. I'm no, uh, uh, it's public defender, you know, which is uh, not good. You know, might as well be by yourself. Only uh, losers, only losers have public defenders. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am. <laughs> For not listening to you, Tom. Yep. Man, I can't leave the state. You know, uh, I got I got a sucky job because nobody wants to hire felons. Uh, where I'm at, there's nothing but felons. It's like a mini prison, you know. You want to try radio? <laughs> yeah, that'll be better. Plenty of opportunities for convicted felons. <laughs> yeah, especially in those AIM stations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd say all over the dial. Oh, man. Tom, you're, you're the, the greatest. You're the truth. I always say Tom like this is the truth. That's it. Damn That's straight. A, yeah, he's straight. You know, you don't. I tell everybody, tune into this guy. 
when I was locked up, I would tell everybody, hey, listen to this guy, man. He's true. I, would talk, I told him what happened, and and I don't know if they listen to you or not, but, you know, I to, I'm telling everybody, listen to this guy. He's the truth. I'm, I'm 100% fact that, you know, he's correct on everything. Look, look where I'm at. And, uh, I know where you're at, and I could have predicted that. That's true. I just got to say... By the way, the fact... Listen to Tom. Yeah. By yeah. the way, you had no idea that her ex was uh, violent? Excuse me? You had no idea that her ex was a violent person? Yes, Tom. She would tell me that. Oh! You didn't think that was a red flag? Oh, uh, I know. Oh, my God. Not... And then uh, uh, the worst thing she told me, oh, yeah, you know, you know, she said, we can only have sex on the weekends when the kid's not here. That, that's what she told me, Tom. And so you accepted it. You said, oh, you said, okay, honey, anything you say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was with big time right there, huh? I'm just a big pussy, honey. Whatever you want, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, it's the worst. And then the kid was hungry right away. Oh, yeah, I'll go get him some food. Just to, just, just, just to get some, Tom. That's how pussy whipped I was. Oh, Jesus. Honey, oh, my God. Now you're killing me, Larry. That's all I can say. Junior on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, I just wanted to share a quick story with you. I thought I knew more than uh, than the professor. That's for sure. I was uh, in a, an eight year marriage. Uh, two kids uh, finished. Ended up that marriage um, after end of the marriage. About a year later, uh, I did some dating. A year later, uh, moved in, uh, got into a serious relationship, and uh, ended up three ended about three months ago. But I didn't listen, and I went and moved in, jumped into a serious relationship after the marriage. And you can just imagine how that went. Oh, Jesus, from one lily pad to another, you're one of these guys who always has to be in a relationship. Well, you know what? I did. I did the. Uh, I did the Tom Likas thing for a while. And then I thought, you know, well, I need to uh, set an example for my kids. I need to have something serious, you know. Uh, and I thought I was doing the right thing, but unfortunately, no, that was not the case. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that I did do right, though, right after the uh, marriage was uh, when I had myself a vasectomy. And uh, so no more kids, but you, you're 100% right, you know, going to, from one bad thing into another. That's just how it goes. Can't you can't you spend some time on your own and think about what happened and, and try to uh, do a little self analyzing? You know what? I thought I had done that. I thought I had done that. And in, in, uh, for how long? I I did it for about a year. For about a year, and after that, like I said, you know, I thought I was doing the, the right thing for my kids. You know, I'm a little boy and a girl, and and I thought, you know, I need to. Uh, be into a serious relationship, you know, and uh, try to make things work. And this guy had uh, come along, great girl and everything, uh, just like me, workaholic. But, you know, I, unfortunately, no, things uh, things don't go right. You know, once they don't go right the first time, they won't be the uh, second time either, or a third or a fourth. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, but no, I'm doing the, uh, I'm following your advice, you know, just staying single, and I think the, that's probably going to be the best deal, you know? Well, I think you're right about that. I, I could have told you that. Laura on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Just wanted to let you know that I do know more than you at one point. <laughs> at what point? Well, you can't be lying to other people. Because sure whether it's a woman or a man, what goes around comes around, and eventually you're going to get caught really bad. But the point I is, it doesn't matter if I get caught. So oh, what if someone finds out? For it. But what am I doing illegal? Well, you might not be doing anything illegal for that for a specific reason right now, but how do you know you can't get people in trouble and things like that? And then just because you lie... How would I get somebody in trouble? Uh, lying to a woman about being an actor or whatever just to get her laid. There's only sense. one state where that is illegal, and that law is going to be challenged. It's in Massachusetts. Other than that, it's completely legal. 
I, you can get in trouble for that because here no, you, you are can't. knocking somebody up by accident because you decided to tell them. Doesn't matter. There are you get look. You can imagine that there ought to be laws like that, but there aren't. I'm not saying that you can't do it, and I'm not saying that. It's so it's not illegal, illegal right? right? You just well, said that I can find myself in jail, but I can't find myself in jail because what law did I break? What goes around comes around. Well, well, you just said I could find myself in jail. What law have I broken? Well, let me tell you, okay? For years and years, I kept on telling my ex that he kept on lying. And I'm not talking to you. Anna, no, we'll get to that in a minute. Answer my question. Because he was lying. He no, I don't want to hear it. I'm asking you about my question. You said I could end up in jail for lying. Tell me what law I would have broken. Like for what? For you what? Why did you tell me I could find myself in jail? Why did you say that? I said not you, but if people lie, then you could end up in jail. There is somewhere. no law against lying to get laid anywhere except Massachusetts. I'm not saying there's a law for getting laid. I'm just saying that eventually what goes around comes around. You get somebody knocked up. You do whatever you do. I because I take the proper precautions. All right. Thank you all for calling. Coming up next, Gustavo Arellano. He's the columnist who writes Ask a Mexican. He has a new book. We'll talk about that and more and your questions about Mexicans as we continue. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Son, let me ask you a question. How did it feel to dump that bitch? It feels great because now I'm getting more ass than a rental car, my man. <laughs> <laughs> the Tom Likey Show. Well, 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 here we are. I'm Tom Likas. And uh, joining us again on the Tom Likas Show is our friend Gustavo Ariano, who uh, is a columnist with several alternative newspapers around the country such as the OC Weekly, the LA Weekly, the Village Voice, Dallas Observer. He's all over the place. And his first book, Ask a Mexican, got a lot of critical acclaim. And um, he's been on our show many times answering your questions about Mexicans. And he'll do that for you here at 1-800-5800-TOM. He is also the author of a new book called Orange County, A Personal History. Gustavo, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Dad. Thank you so much. <laughs> apa, or in Spanish, apa. I'd call you apa. I love that. Let's talk about your new book. You're, you're, now you're writing about Orange County. And uh, as you know, and uh, as I think you reference in the book, I mean, when you think of Orange County, uh, the average Caucasian doesn't think of Mexicans. No, we the traditional stereotypes that people have about Orange County is three things. Disneyland, women in bikinis, and crazy radical white republicans and that's just not the case in, in the book that i you know in my book i talk about the reality of orange county orange county is supposed to be majority latino within 30 years we are, already have the largest population of vietnamese outside of vietnam in the world we have a lot of muslims a lot of persians all types of different minorities and really the republican party in orange county which likes to call itself the most important republican party in the country it's just filled with a bunch of corrupt crazy people it's uh, pretty amazing that uh, people have this perception because, you know, anybody who spent time in Orange County, if you've been to Anaheim or Santa Ana or City of Orange or any number of places knows, there's plenty of Mexicans in Orange County. The, the, the people who actually live in Orange County or know about Orange County, they, they know this and they understand that. But the problem with Orange County is that it's always try to portray itself in a particular way that it really goes to the boosters. So that's why you have the images of the palm trees, the images of Disneyland in the book that I, that I just wrote that's going to come out September 16th. I talk about something called the cult of the orange crate in that Orange County subscribes to this cult of the old orange crate labels from the 1920s that had those beautiful orange groves going up through hills with beautiful names like Esperanza and Mission Brand. And it was all beautiful and it showed some part of the truth, but it didn't show the Mexicans that were picking all the oranges like my great-grandfather or my grandfather who had to live in segregated areas of Anaheim well into the 1950s. 
Well, I, I think that uh, as you uh, wrote your book, you uh, told a lot of interesting stories as well about your family, and you didn't uh, cut corners on that. No, not at all. I it, it Really, my family has experienced the breadth of what it is to be a Mexican in the United States. We got the segregation. My uh, We got the dropout thing. My mom dropped out of school in ninth grade. My dad was an alcoholic. Myself, when I entered kindergarten, the only language I spoke was Spanish. But in the book, I show how my family was able to succeed. My dad's now a truck driver, speaks English, been sober for 25 years or so. My mom, she's went back to school at age, what, 57? She's going to school right now. And then myself and my four siblings, we're all college educated, educated with degrees, with good professional jobs. And that's really how most Mexicans are eventually. It, it takes time. You don't, the Irish didn't immediately become as successful overnight. It took a couple of generations of slums and drunks. Now, uh, your, is your family like mine? My family goes nuts. Anytime I tell a story that in any way might even for a split second, reflect negatively on them, no matter how it turned out in the end. We're a Mexican family. Of course, we're going to not want others to talk about it, even while we talk about our own uh, family's uh, per- perversions and all the dirty secrets and so forth and all the gossip. Mexican families, we it's kind of like Irish families, really, where we love to present this front of unity, but in the background, there's just so many squabbles and vendettas and grudges that, go, that don't go away for generations. But I think in talking about it, I think it's important for the rest of the country to realize that Mexicans, we're not, as I do in my column, that Mexicans are not saints, they're not sinners, we're some we're in between, like every other uh, group of people on Earth. It's, that's just the reality of things. Now, uh, of course, uh, the, you're known for your column, and uh, secondarily, your book, which was uh, a big hit from everything I've read. Uh, uh, do you get uh, any uh, flack from your family or your friends uh, writing a column like that? No, my, my family loves a column. The only thing my mom doesn't like to... T- doesn't want me to write about is sex because for all Mexican moms, their children are going to be virgins for the rest of their life. And then one time my dad, he asked me not to use so many curse words in the column, but before I could correct them, he said, you know what though? Us Mexican men, we love to curse like sailors. So go ahead and keep using uh, all the curse words that you use. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, my parents, they're proud of me. They're proud of me because I, as my mom says, you shouldn't, she's scared of me writing the column and even just writing period because she says I write the truth and people don't like it when somebody speaks the truth. Well, that's uh, certainly true. They freak out. And uh, uh, as you have uh, added newspapers, I- I'm interested, uh, for example, uh, I-, I believe that I've seen your column on the Village Voice in New York. Is that right? Yeah. Not a lot of Mexicans in New York. What kind of response do you get from New York? It's surprising because at first people are saying there shouldn't be Ask a Mexican in New York. There should be Ask a Dominican or Ask a Puerto Rican, the, you know, the Latino populations that are most prevalent out there. But the, the the people who read the column are people who are interested in not only about Mexicans, but in reading a funny, uh, out, yeah, perverse column just in general. That really that really means a lot of people in this country. So Ask a Mexican, it now comes out in I think 37 papers across the country and every single place where it's been published, it was first met with outrage and suspicion, but after a month or so it really became one of the most popular sections in the particular newspaper where it came out and whenever I go, like I'm going to go on tour for uh, the Orange County book, I'm going to go to Dallas, Houston, Phoenix here in Pico Rivera next Tuesday and in Orange County in Santa Ana next Thursday and I always get a lot of people who who say, at first I didn't like your column, now I like it, now that I actually bothered to read it. Um, I'm wondering if uh, Mexicans are just as offended as other Hispanic people. Uh, for example, in Southern California, if you are Hispanic, or if you look Hispanic, uh, people always assume you're a Mexican. And yeah. in New York, uh, if you look Hispanic, uh, no matter how many other Hispanics, Cubans, Salvadorians, uh, Colombians live in New York, uh, that people are assumed to be Puerto Rican. It always happens. I think it happens with anybody. You don't want to be assumed. You don't want people to assume you're something you're not. So if you're Irish, you're going to get pissed off if somebody calls you a Pole or an Italian person. So same thing with Mexicans. We don't like being called a Guatemalan, especially Guatemalan or Cuban or Argentinian or whatever. Same thing with Cubans. A lot of times I hear people write to me, Cubans say, why do people mistake me for your, you know, for your dirty race? And I tell them, like, come on, let's not, let's not be so uh, angry about these things. People make mistakes all the time. It's just a matter of how we react to the mistakes that people have that we should be judged upon. Gustavo's column is Ask a Mexican. That's also the name of his first book and his latest book now available in stores and online and wherever books are sold, Orange County, A Personal History. And let's grab a couple of phone calls while we have time for Gustavo at 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. I've got a question for Gustavo. Go for it. 
the whole way thing. The, when they say hello <laughs> way, Odele way, on this way, I'm I'm not getting that. I, I heard it means BS. I heard it means something else. Yeah, what, the, the word. Yeah, the the word I don't even know if you can say it on the air, but the the word itself literally means ox. A buey is an ox, but in Mexican Spanish, the word ox signifies the same thing as an ass. In other words, if you're an ass, then that means you're, in Spanish you say you're an ox. So that the, when people say that word way, they're, they're just calling you a dummy or an idiot or so forth like that. It's one of the least offensive uh, slurs that people can use in Mexico. So if I say "Que on this way" to someone, that's not exactly a nice thing to say. No, I mean, especially amongst friends, it's like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, "What's up, sucker?" Or, or you know, "What's up, uh, MF?" Or whatever. You know, amongst friends, it's really not an offensive thing. If somebody calls you that, they're kind of poking you. They're you know, they're trying to mess with you, but it's nothing like calling somebody a uh, mother f or any stuff like that. So it just you know, just mess with them. Just call them. Just say the same thing back, and you'll be friends and drink tequila. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Coming up at the top of the hour, Like Us 101. We're here with Gustavo Ariano and his new book, Orange County, A Personal History, and it is available right now all over the place. Uh, Dick on the Tom Like Us show. Hello. Hello, sir. Hey. Gustavo, I used to be a cable technician in the field. I'm the technical trainer now. Going into the homes in Santa Ana, the wrought iron fences and the brick pillars but it's very low, three to four feet. So it's not keeping people out of the yard, but the yard is surrounded by that. The second was anything hanging on the wall, pictures, family, uh, portraits of Mother Mary or Jesus, were always well above the center line or closer to the ceiling than they were to the floor. <laughs> I was always curious about that. Okay, the first one's easy. That's actually a remnant of the Spanish influence on Mexico, but the Spaniards got that from the Moors. So, you know, the Moors, the uh, Arabs who conquered Spain centuries ago. So all those wrought iron fences, the Arabic designs, the arches and all that, that's a direct uh, legacy of the Moorish thing. So it's just something that Mexicans think, we think it's nice. Like Americans think lawns and uh, lilies are nice and all that stuff. And se- second thing with the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the paintings up on the ceiling and so forth, we're trying to look up to heaven. So if we put Mother Mary or uh, Theo Chui up on the, you know, right next to the ceiling, we're just always imagining them to be closer to God. That's all. Thank you so much for the call. We appreciate it. And uh, Gustavo, always great to have you here. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Tom. Gustavo Ariano, his column, Ask a Mexican, his book, Orange County, A Personal History. Go see it. The Tom Likas Show.